This episode brought to you by Chime, the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. the nostalgia critic guy remember it so you don't have to where are we in Zack Snyder right now I mean this guy has had a roller coaster of a career going back and forth between being the worst thing for movies and the best thing for movies with beloved hits like 300 and his cut of Justice League to despise flicks like Batman v Superman and Sucker Punch to divisive films like everything else he's done well one thing is for sure with a giant roster of movies that have so many passionate opinions for some reason you want me to talk about his damn owl flick. Released in 2010 and resulting in me constantly asking, the Easter Bunny movie? Legend of the Guardians, Owls of Gahul got mixed reviews from critics and didn't do so hot at the box office, but like a lot of Snyder films, it gained an audience that was fascinated. For years people have been asking me to review this and I honestly had no interest because of how mixed the reactions were. But even the people who didn't quite like it found themselves saying, it's got a sorta, kinda, you just gotta see it. Yep, people have called it boring, generic, overblown, yet most people don't regret actually seeing it. There is apparently something to this film that people like to talk about and discuss with others. So okay, let's throw my hat into the ring and see what that is. Being a Snyder film, I'm assuming this is at least three hours long. Holy shit, I knew that would review this years ago! This is Legend of the Guardians. Ah, uh, an owl and the Warner Brothers logo. So I can expect 20 more of these? How long till we get the slow down speed up thing? Not even before the title leaves! That's Snyder fresh from the oven! To his credit though, this is also the fastest of his movies I've ever said. Shit, I really should have seen this on the big screen. Terrorizing the Elf Kingdoms are over! Not so fast! Jim Sturges plays Soren, because of course that's his name, who tells stories and fantasizes about being a guardian of Gahul. Have you ever seen a Guardian? But just because you can't see something doesn't mean it isn't real. Like how this film may have bombed, but the audience is there! Soren thinks the Guardians are more than a legend though, as he talks about their fight with the Ice Claws and freeing the Owl Kingdoms from the evil Metal Beak. Yeah, as gorgeous as this looks, this was made up in two minutes, right? <sighs> Claude, wait! No! Soren's brother Claude, tell me if you've heard this one, wants to be the best insert skill here. I'm gonna be the best flyer! That's because Tido's the best at everything! Or the best name to try not and laugh at every time you say it, Claude. <laughs> Soren is beginning his flying training as well and seems to be a natural, impressing his father. Well, seems like yesterday they were hatchlings and now, well, you know, they'll soon be grown and leaving the hollow. Next the telling Don Bluth, yes, but only if there's no songs. This movie gives all sorts of neat owl facts, whether you want them or not. It's your first pellet. It was the mouse you ate. Every owl yaps up pellets. While that is disgusting, it is also educational. Like I had no idea they kept snakes as caregivers before they ate them like string cheese. Could I just show you how? Well, without you being so angry? Soren tries to show Clud how to glide smoothly, but they fall and are afraid to be attacked by rodents of unusual size. But I don't think they exist. <laughs> They're saved though by two owls who like to critique how evil they are. Keep your mouth shut. What do you think of that, Jack? You know, your evil stare reminds me a little of my intimidator. Yeah, it was an old bit even in 2010. Do you have any idea where they're taking us? They quickly discover they're being save napped, as other owls have been taken from their homes, including one Soren befriends named Gilfy. Your parents and families have abandoned you, so from now, you'll be classified as orphans. Oh no, is this all because I want to sing a? Some of you will be pickers. Some will be soldiers. Some will be PR repair. Figure out how to lick this without biting it! They're greeted by General Naira, played by Helen Mirren, who says they are the pure ones and this is their new home as either workers or soldiers. Sleep. They're trying to moon blink us. Owls would get exhausted and collapse when they woke up. They just weren't the same. Oh, it's like watching Eternals. You fall asleep, yet you feel like something was taken from you. 
they notice a lot of the owls have changed since falling asleep, becoming zombified. Where are we going now? We need to act moonblinked. I don't trust. Look at the face. It's vacant, with a hint of sadness. They're supposed to look for metal flecks from owl pellets for a shiny magical thing because all stories like this have shiny magical things. One owl named Grimble, voiced by Hugo Weaving, says he wants to help them learn to fly and escape as he's technically a slave there too because they're holding on to his family. And I'll admit, if you didn't tell me, I never would have guessed this was Hugo Weaving. Have you flown at all before? Show me what you can do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't laugh while being enslaved, boy, that's a saying I have no idea how to end. Naira, meanwhile, tests Clud among the other hunters to see who's the best. And I will admit I dig the hell out of her deliciously sinister voice. Come, let's tell your brother what rewards there are for those who recognize their true family. Evil has been known to have... cupcakes? Grimple tells them once they escape, they need to make their way to the Guardians of Gahul. But maybe he said that a little too loudly. Fly a long way to get to the Guardians. Really? Is what I heard these young traders say. Kill them both! They try to escape and ask Clud to join them, but somewhat out of nowhere, he stays behind. Come on, now's that chance! I am home. Yeah, you know it's building up to it, but a little bit more of him feeling a connection would have made the switch feel more believable. It's not quite kill younglings okay, but it could have been fleshed out a bit more. <laughs> They're small enough to get out, and they enjoy their new freedom. Again, I feel like this would have worked better if they were there just a little longer. I'm wondering if this is another Snyder project that was cut down a little too much. Now the five hour edit with Jared Leto eating Archimedes, that'll be the definitive cut. Say, Clud's also got a sister in this place has some good cult referrals. What can you offer me? I have a sister. Here, the young ones are our future. How does she feel about not feeling anymore? They discover a kooky owl named Digger, played by David Wenham, who always plays either chiseled warriors or buffoon bissels. And they also happen to discover Mrs. P, their snake nanny. I forget how this works. <laughs> She's my nursemaid. Somehow you verbalizing that doesn't make this feel any more normal. Digger's friend Twilight seems excited for adventure. Maybe too excited. He flies off into danger to be battered, bruised, and maimed. I thought Russell Crowe wasn't allowed to sing anymore. They all agree to find the Guardians, but back at Owl Mordor, we find their leader, Metalbeak, played by Joel Edgerton, is excited to see their new member, Clud's sister. Remember, weakness is for the lower species. Never for us. Now go wield me another metal mask with your... How does this world work? Our heroes make it to the Sea of Hulamir. Again, written in two minutes, right? And did I mention yet for a film that came out over ten years ago, this animation is still impressively stunning. Twas foretold trespassers would land on my shore. They discover an echidna named... Okay, echidna. Who's not quite annoying, but not quite funny either. Now state your desire. If you really know all, then how come you don't know that? Twas foretold there would be one who doubts. <sighs> she looks like one who would not hand over her social security number. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Yes, yes, she's very dumb oh, yes. that way. This does lead to a pretty funny line, though. When you're flown as far as you can, you're halfway there. What did he say? We're halfway there. And yes, the cheesemakers are blessed. Welcome to Burger Burger, home of tacos. Can I take your order? No, no, sir, you don't want that. No, you want chime. You will listen to me when I talk to you! Anyway, is that piece of plastic in your wallet doing enough for you? Because with the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card, you can start building credit with everyday purchases and on-time payments. You see, with Credit Builder, members can increase their credit history with no annual fees or interest. I don't care if there's a long line of cars honking behind you, sir. This is your credit. And having a good credit score can mean getting better car loan rates or renting apartments easier. Or just bragging rights around the dinner table. 
You must do the thing, sir, that I'm about to say. So continue your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's Chime.com slash nostalgia. How dare you, sir? Now you will listen to this man talk very fast. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stripe Bank NA. Pursuant to a license from Visa USA, Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secure Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary, and some user scores may not improve. Do you understand me, sir? Sir. 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 Hello, ma'am. Can I tell you about Chime? You will listen to me! Go to Chime.com slash nostalgia today. See Doug play Guardians of the Galaxy Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time on Twitch. We also got a new schedule and material six days a week. Hope to see you there. Our heroes get caught in a storm, but are saved by almost otherworldly warriors. I really love this effect where they fly in slow motion, but they speak in real time. It's a clever and subtle touch you could easily miss. Can you fly with me? There are five of us. Yes, we know. You two should fill us up fine, though. I'm taken to the Owlwalk village. It was that or Animal Kingdom. It was a loss either way. Where Lord Alamair, played by Sam Neill, and Lord Baron, played by Richard Ruxborough, discuss whether or not to believe them. They're also joined by Ezelrib, played by Jeffrey Rush. Because let's face it, Jeffrey Rush had to voice something in this. And if you think I'm a coward, or I'd simply urge others on. I'll fight you right now, Order. Lauren. And I must say, his combination of Mick from Rocky and Mr. Ages from Secret of Nim is definitely a choice. My search and rescue chore is scheduled to leave on a routine survey during the next full moon. You should leave immediately. And no more dealings with the Beaky Blinders. I don't care how forced it is, I am proud of that joke! <laughs> seem to fit in and are even trained in the ways of tracking, navigating, and completely inappropriate song choices. Shipwreck in a sea of faces, there's a dreamy world up there. We are 52 minutes in and this is the first pop song we're hearing. In fact, it's the first song, period. Unless you count. Name. Which you don't, you don't. Not only is it out of nowhere, but it doesn't fit at all. Take to the sky. It's like if in Fellowship of the Ring they got to Lothlorien and they were greeted with. <laughs> it's being consumed by the ooze of Happy Feet saying, What of us? What of us? Back with Metal Beak, he prepares his trained soldiers to attack. Long ago, I was viciously attacked by the coward light. I'm sorry, I emotionally can't connect with this scene unless a song I could hear on the radio is played. And I am Mackleby! Much better. But we could go? Tonight? Just sleep. Wait, what? No! Shit! Yes! Go! Will! This little rib teaches them how to fly in the storm as we're introduced to our second pop song that honestly fits a lot better. Sorry, I just started wondering, what if Enya sues? Soren finds out Elzo Rib was the leader in the famous Ice Claws story he used to tell, and of course discovers it's not as glamorous as he thought. This is what it looks like when you've actually fought in battle. It's not glorious, it's not beautiful, it's not even heroic. It's merely doing what's right. Which some say is the definition of heroic, but it's not, it's doing what's right. Which some say is the definition of heroic, but it's not, it's doing what's right. Which some say, I'm crazy. Alamir returns with Soren's sister, who has indeed been moonblinked. Oh, you're mean, movie. I kinda love you. And seeing how ridiculously calm Alamir is, and oh, because Sam Neill is playing him, I'm just gonna guess and say he's in on it. This is no time for half measures. Sharpen the battle claws. To arms. To arms. You die tomorrow. I mean, you make them die. You're all being betrayed by me. I am bad at this. The owls gear up and fly into battle, and I have to admit, while from some angles the sister looks disturbing hypnotized, from others she kinda looks funny. Like, she looks baked as a pie here. She dropped some purple haze and is watching Amazing World of Gumball with that face. Sorry, you promised. She snaps out of it, though, and reveals the owl deemed most likely to betray them has betrayed them. Soren and the others left behind try to warn them, but it looks like it's too late. The guardians have been taken out by... 
Zool, what is this again? Must it be bats that bleed them? They have no gizzards to be impaired by the power of the flex. I guess I shouldn't be shocked the evil plan from armored supernatural owls is hard to follow, but yeah, I did think it would be a little less Thundercats. Use your gizzard, boy. Fly inside. Soren listens to his gizzard and flies into the fire, setting the machine ablaze that makes the vague energy beam that's always just enough to hurt our heroes but not quite kill them. They rush towards the flying Meta Knights, and I never thought about what combat between armored owls would look like because I'm not drunk, but actually it looks pretty cool. What? Soren fights his brother while Ezelrib fights Metal Beak. They were moon blinking other owls and they were turning them into slaves. You're just weak, Soren. Still living in your dreams. Living in his dreams? You literally lead an army while they're asleep. While their development was rushed, I'll admit I didn't know what direction it was gonna go with the brothers. Would it be a last minute redemption or would they never see eye to eye? In the end, Kled plays to Soren's kindness to trick him so he can kill both of them. But it backfires, only killing himself. Okay, it's official. Being an owl is hard. After losing his brother, Soren takes his vengeance out on Metal Beak, killing him off as PG-ing as possible. Fall back! To me! We'll get him back in the sequels that'll never follow! The Guardians bring other owls to Gahul, including Soren's parents, and they once again vow to protect those who are in danger. Soren! Soren! Oh! Where's Clud? You never heard of Clud. Speaking of which, they do hint that Clud is still alive and that there's more adventures to follow. But sadly, the film didn't do well enough to warrant any sequels. And I do say sadly because, eh, I kinda thought it was okay. Make no mistake, this is a film where I'd most likely agree with the criticisms it's gotten. It is a pretty generic story with pretty generic characters. It does feel like a little bit more time was needed to flesh it out. But I did really get into the animation and the atmosphere. This feels like a world I can breathe in and want to breathe in. This honestly looks like a movie that would come out today. I'm still amazed at how good it looks for coming out over a decade ago. Aside from that one pop song in the middle, the film never forces any current catchphrases or jokes either. It keeps it on a large and epic tone. Even the characters, for as stock as they are, never come across as annoying to watch. They serve their purpose just enough to keep me invested. I'll admit I've never read the books they were based on, and I'm assuming they're done better, but the way the film takes its time to let you feel like you're in the air flying in this world does make me understand why critics say there's something to it. And I'm glad people pushed me to check it out, because yes, while it's not a great film, it has a nobility to it that kind of is charming. And his problems aren't awful, just a little too familiar and common. I guess I can say if you have even the tiniest curiosity in checking this out, it might just be enough of a hoot to keep you interested. I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. Named. What's up everybody? Our cameos for charity are still doing great and so we're gonna switch it up this month. All through June we're donating our cameo money to Friends of Firefighters. Friends of Firefighters is a not-for-profit organization that provides independent, confidential, and free mental health counseling and wellness services to active and retired New York firefighters as well as their family members. So if you want a cameo from me as the Nostalgia Critic saying happy birthday or congrats or whatever you can think of, click the link below and be supporting a wonderful charity. And even if you're like, screw you, I don't want a cameo from you, well, spread the word about this charity anyway. Check out the site, donate, or share it on social media. Thanks so much again, and take care.